Hello and welcome to the Temple of Tomes with your host, Any Comics Jones. <laughs> Today is June 20th, 2023, and this is episode 577, I believe. Okay, today we're going to take a look at issue number one of The Last Barbarians. This is out from Image Comics, the Shadow Line, I guess, uh, imprint. And on the cover here, we see our main character, and I cannot remember her name. But uh, this book is not a recommend, unfortunately. It came in at a whopping $3.99 U.S. dollars, and it is a Brian Haberlin production. He drew, wrote, and inked, and I guess, everything. His stories by him. This is a not a recommend. It could have used a story editor. I have a lot of issues with it. We'll get into it in just a moment here. I do believe it's out like three other three issues now. I'm a little bit late on getting on this one. Um, I don't know if I'll pick up another one just to see how it plays out. But it seems to have a lot of holes in it. And we'll get into that in a little bit here. First of all, let's take a quick look to see who wrote on it, uh, worked on it. Words by Brian Haverly with Hannah Wall. I don't know who that is. Art by Brian Haverlin. Sorry, I said Haverly before. Haverlin. Colors by Gerard Van Dyke. Letterings by Francis Takanaga. And production is by Hannah Wall and Matt Hansel. Flats by T.R. Breyer. So the flats are actually mentioned in this one. We don't usually see that too often. All right. And here's the decree. Setup. Decree by Guild Maestro Jana the Stalwart in the 700th cycle. Individuals should pursue individual skill and live in a singular definition. To be so misguided as to see oneself as multi-talented is erroneous and offensive to the fabric of our realm. We pursue a single talent at a guild, and anyone to think otherwise is entirely deserving of the most odious of titles, Barbarian, and not is to be employed by any guild. So you think this is going to be like a strong guild story, but it's not. Um, in fact, the world building in this is a little bit shaky. I, it's just kind of pieced together with ideas. I, I, uh, we can start off at the end of this, this heist, so to speak, our adventure, and I'm not even sure if this is the main character or not. It, it doesn't seem to really look like the main character they show in this story. But um, we'll get into that. <laughs> so there's there's apparently been a, a heist be taking place at this castle. They had to escape through the sewer. And this is where we come up with our first look at our antagonist. I don't know, a protagonist, whatever you want to call her. Um, and she's this snarky, know-it-all girl that doesn't play by the rules and is just awesome at everything. So, um, and she's always mean, mad, and insulting to everybody as well. So they got that going. So her name is Silver. They call her Silv for short. This is her hunk of a brother that apparently is a half-wit for some reason and appears to be the only man that she trusts. And then there's this panda in here, or creature, I'm not quite sure what it is, um, that is in it for a while and just kind of goes off. So I'm assuming that someday, sometime later in the storyline, it's, it's going to be coming back. But the way some of these things are resolved in this story, they don't make a lot of sense. We go to the guild, and it's a guild of thieves. So I don't know if that means there's a guild of killers and a guild of rapists, but this one's a guild of thieves. Um, and they call themselves art, art, artisans, which, uh, artisans, which I don't think, if you're a thief, you're really an artisan, are you? I don't know. But, um, so they have an argument. They, they got out with the, the relic that they were supposed to steal. And the guy's claiming that it has been damaged while being, being stolen, which I don't know how he would know that since he wasn't along and didn't see it in its original condition so he's trying to negotiate for a lower price she gets angry she's got a short temper she picks it up throws it and crushes it which is dumb 
because they could have got something for it. Now she's she's totally broke. Broke, broke, broke. And then she's off contemplating her fate. She and for some reason they got this real heavy line drawn in here, which I don't think is really necessary. Um it just looks weird. I, I'm not sure why Brian decided to do that, but he did. The actual drawings, the actual art in here, for the most part, is pretty good. I was, I liked it a lot. I wanted to like the story. I could not like the story. It would just seem like it's full of holes. So she goes to this place, says it was inhabited by giants, but of course she gets attacked by some kind of giant creature. But like nothing happens to her, she just kind of talks her way out of it. Um, <laughs> which, and then it, it just kind of disappears. So I don't know what point that whole thing was to show that she's some kind of diplomat. I'm not quite sure. And then she tries to get another guild. So they spend a whole page of her being turned down by all these other guilds. And there's only one that will accept her. And I guess it's like a brothel guild. I'm not sure. But um, and then we see a picture of her brother again. I can't remember what his name was. Um, but she's quote unquote taking care of it. And just mad that she has to do that. She seems to drink a lot even though she doesn't have any money. She's being fronted money by this innkeeper or friend. I'm not quite sure. She promised her a job, but she, she'll have to like start from the bottom. Like um, cleaning tables and cleaning to, uh, the toilets and things like that. And she just doesn't want any part of it. She is approached by another guy, this stranger. Who, um, after she's threatened with eviction um, who offers her a job and she's I guess she also has these dreams of of when she was a child where she lost her parents and there's some something chasing her so it's not really spelled out and this is where we the panda tells her ah ha ha I don't have any money so I have to leave I'm going back home bye so we don't see him again for the rest of the story I don't know if he'll come back in future issues it's not really clear where he went. Then she sees this hunky guy she likes. She has a crush on. But he's got eyes for someone else, of course. So now she really needs a drink. And this is when she's approached for a job by this other gentleman. He does not He's kind of mysterious, I mean, but he seems friendly enough. I don't know why there's a big deal, but... Um, apparently he's been turned down by some guilds too, but they don't say what or why he was turned down by guilds. He actually is asking her to go on a quest with him. So she decides to take it up. And she goes back to the, um, to her house to get her stuff and she's been evicted. And the guy just tells her that, uh, his, she's already, he's already moved her stuff out. So she's mad at him. And then they... They go back to this guy, I can't remember his name, Falk, I guess is his name, and he says, um, we'll go with you, we're going to take you up on your offer. He goes, oh, I already hired somebody, and then they show this woman here. So I guess it's going to be a female-centric uh, comic, um, and she's a warrior, but he needed two people, so you're going to hire the two of them at w for the price of one. So it's like best, better than nothing, I guess. In the meantime, there's this creature up on a roof. And it's got like the head of a rabbit with antlers and the body of a spider, but it can leap. Um, so I'm not sure. It's, it's actually a spy. And it goes, so they take off on their journey. It goes back, this little creature goes back to these other two women who I don't know who they are. I guess this, the whole thing's supposed to be mysterious. Um, like I said, I don't, they send this creature back on its way to spy on him, but like, they've left, so I don't know how it's going to catch up with him, it's going to find it. But here we go, here's the covers for the next issue. So there's, you can see there's other characters going to be introduced here. Um, and I don't know, like, she kind of matches this one, but I'm not sure if that's the same or not. And here's a quick blurb. The more Sil Sylve and Shadow, Shadow's her brother, spend with Falk, he's the guy that's hired him, the more his story doesn't add up. They're unsure if they're, if they're rescuing his grandson or nephew, and when he tasks them with raiding a 
castle, they're not sure if he's stupid or just plain crazy. Sure, they didn't want to starve to death, but potential public execution doesn't sound that much better. So, it is a not recommend. Unfortunately, the art is, like I said, the art is really good in here. I, I really enjoyed looking at the art. The story just is... They needed a developmental e editor on this one, I believe. And maybe it'll be tied together in the next issue. I think it's going to have the fourth issue coming out maybe this month, because... Um, I, I don't know why I think that, but I think it's, it's like kind of his fourth issue. So I'm a little bit late to the game on this one. So, The Last Barbarians, not a recommend. We don't really know if we even saw barbarian, Barbarians in the first um, issue here. But uh, maybe they're, they at the very end there, those were Barbarians. I just don't know. As always, thank you for stopping by and watching this review of The Last Barbarians. As always, please like, please subscribe, please leave comments if you wish, and we'll see you next time at the Temple of Tomes. This is Indie Comics Jones bidding you adieu.